What's up folks, it's your buddy Fatal Roadie. Tonight we're going to be doing the Raw recap. We started off with Kurt Angle coming out. Shortly afterwards, Roman Reigns comes out from the crowd. Kurt Angle advises him that he's trespassing because he's suspended. Roman Reigns starts talking up Brock Lesnar's absence. Kurt Angle tells Roman Reigns that he's going to get Brock Lesnar in three weeks, that he's just going to have to chill. Roman Reigns says that he doesn't care, that he's not leaving until he faces Brock Lesnar tonight. Kurt Angle walks up the ramp, and Roman Reigns grabs a chair and sits in the middle of the ring. Shortly afterwards, U.S. Marshals come out. They read Roman Reigns' his rights. They handcuff him and try to escort him out of the ring. Roman Reigns then attacks the U.S. Marshals, and then Brock Lesnar comes out. Roman Reigns, still handcuffed, grabs a chair and tries to defend himself. Brock Lesnar levels him, beats him up, hits him numerous times with the chair, and that fives him. Brock Lesnar leaves the ring. EMTs come out. They put him on a stretcher. As they start to wheel him off, Brock Lesnar comes back out, tips over the stretcher, poses for the crowd, and leaves. I don't know what that was all about. We then have a recap with Alexa Bliss, Asuka, and Nia Jax, which leads us to our first match, Asuka versus Alexa Bliss. Before the match, Alexa Bliss cuts a promo on how she's sorry for what she said about Nia Jax. Sorry that she didn't say it earlier, that she used Nia Jax, blah, blah, blah. Get okay. on with it! We now come to our match. Alexa Bliss dominated the opening portion of the match. Asuka tries to fire back, but Mickey James distracts her, allowing Alexa Bliss to take over. Alexa Bliss tries to go to the top rope. Asuka counters it, but Alexa Bliss was able to do a sunset flip or two count. Asuka was able to get an ankle lock in on Alexa Bliss. She was able to get the rope break. She goes out of the ring, and Mickey James escorts her up the ramp, and Alexa Bliss gets counted out. Then Nia Jax music hits. She comes running down the ramp, chases down Alexa Bliss. When she gets her hands on her, Mickey James tries to interfere, giving Alexa Bliss time to run away. Nia Jax continues her pursuit, and that's the last we see of this. Later on backstage, Alexa Bliss confronts Kurt Angle and asks that something be done, and Kurt Angle makes a match at WrestleMania for Nia Jax and Alexa Bliss for the women's title. Then we have Braun Strowman coming out. He talks about last week's win at the Battle Royal to face the bar for the titles, and he says management said that he needs to find a partner. He says he doesn't need a partner, he can do it on his own. Then the bar come out and say he's crazy. Then Cesaro points out that him and Sheamus have worked out together, ate together, slept together, but not in that way. Sheamus says he's got no chance to beat the bar on his own at WrestleMania. Braun Strowman then tells him that he's going to be facing one of the bar in a match right now. So as Sheamus and Cesaro try to get into the ring, Sheamus dips right back out, leaving Cesaro in the ring by himself, which is our next match. This is a pretty decent match. It was a good bit of back and forth. Braun Strowman ragdolled Cesaro for most of the match. Cesaro was able to put in a little bit of offense. Sheamus tried to distract Braun Strowman, allowing Cesaro to roll out of the ring, but Braun Strowman came out and leveled Sheamus. Back in the ring, Braun Strowman power slams Cesaro for the pin. Like I said, this is a pretty decent match. It's all leading up to their match at WrestleMania. There's a lot of speculation on who's going to be Braun Strowman's partner. I agree with what most people are saying, and that Elias is probably going to be his tag team partner, albeit begrudgingly. We then come right from a commercial to the Revival versus Titus Worldwide. No intros, nothing, pretty much just jobber entrances. This was an end match. I really wasn't too into it. Apollo ended up getting the Shatter Machine from the Revival, and the Revival won. We then have Bailey and Sasha Banks versus Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. What the fuck? <sighs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sasha Banks comes out with a microphone and talks about everything that happened with Bailey from Elimination Chamber onwards and that she forgives her. Sasha Banks says that she can't get what happened at Elimination Chamber out of her head. So we start the match. Bruh. Yep, we're doing this again. We've only seen these four people fighting 8,922 times. Sasha Banks and Bailey have problems tagging with each other. She, Sasha Banks tags herself in as Bailey's trying to pin. And at one point, Sasha Banks was trying to tag in Bailey. Bailey wasn't tagging in. And then all of a sudden, she tags herself in. The ref missed a pin attempt by Bailey because Sasha Banks was in the ring. Then Bailey and Sasha Banks start fighting with each other. Sonya Deville pushes Bailey into Sasha Banks, then gives Bailey a kick to the head for the pin. I'm seriously hoping that they pull the trigger on somebody turning heel and we can move on from this. Like I said, I am tired, 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 tired of seeing someone from Absolution facing either Sasha Banks or Bailey. We apparently have all these women in the women's division 
but apparently we can only show these four people. It's ridiculous. Even Nia Jax and Asuka get a jobber every once in a while. Then we got John Cena coming out, and he wants an answer from The Undertaker about their match at WrestleMania. Cena says that The Undertaker is embarrassed from his loss at WrestleMania. John Cena then starts hyping up the crowd and says that the answer from The Undertaker is nothing. Silence. He goes on to say that's the biggest mistake that The Undertaker has made, that it's disrespectful to him and to the WWE Universe. John Cena goes on to call The Undertaker a coward and says you are not a god, nor are you a man. Then Kane comes out. He gets in the ring. John Cena says, here's a sign. We're going to get our answer. And Kane choke slams John Cena. It's then later announced that we're going to have a match next week. Kane versus John Cena. Dude. Jesus. I just hope that this isn't the match that we're going to be getting at WrestleMania. I just as soon see Kurt Hawkins versus James Ellsworth than this match. We then have the Three Stooges come out. You got The Miz crying about how he's getting no respect. Apparently The Miz is now Rodney Dangerfield. Which brings us to our next match, The Club versus The Three Stooges. Before the match starts, Seth Rollins comes out. He's at the announcer's table. This is actually a pretty decent match. There were a lot of tag-ins. We got the usual interference by The Miz Taraj. Finn Balor rolls up The Miz for the pin. After the match, The Three Stooges attack Finn Balor. As The Club starts to get into the ring... They knock them down, which brings Seth Rollins into the mix. He comes in, clears out Dallas and Axel, and gives a curb stomp to The Miz. Which brings us to our main event, Bray Wyatt versus Matt Hardy in the ultimate deletion match at the Hardy Compound. What the hell did I just watch? I will say this, it's definitely a one-of-a-kind match. We started off in a ring, then went to a dilapidated city, to the land of obsolete men. We fought through the woods, ended up in a hangar with a ring, and then finally ended at the Lake of Reincarnation. I tried to give this match the benefit of the doubt. I seriously think they let this feud go way, way too long before they got to this point in the feud. I also think they kind of screwed up with the timing because I think they started the match about 5 minutes to 11 Eastern Time, and they ran way over their scheduled time. They probably should have cut half of these promos that they did which weren't really interesting and they probably could have fit the time frame in but they didn't anyways matt hardy got the twist of fate on bray wyatt for the pin and then pushed him into the lake of reincarnation he then announces that bray wyatt has been deleted great awesome now can we do the same thing with this whole feud i really wasn't too crazy about this raw like i previously mentioned there were way too many promos that took way too long or I really didn't see the, the need for them. And there was just way too much talking through this whole show. Like I said, if we could have cut half of this stuff down, Raw wouldn't have ran over like it did at the Ultimate Deletion match. But I'll do it for the Raw recap. I'll be back tomorrow for the SmackDown review. Leave a comment down below what you thought of tonight's Raw, or what you thought of this video. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to share and subscribe. I've been Fatal Roadie. You've been awesome. Thank you very much for watching. And remember, if it's too loud, you're too old. See ya.